Here they are, the Michigan Wolverines. And across the way, the Southern Bell Trojans are gathering. OJ, there they are. Yeah, they look like they're ready. You know, I want to say something about Michigan. You know, I have a younger sister who was trying to pick a college, and I said, if you don't go to SC, go to Michigan, because I played with a lot, lot of Michigan players. When you have a Michigan rookie, get up on rookie show in, in professional football, hey, they stand up on that chair tall, and they belt out that Michigan song. They have a lot of pride in their school. Lay Leishman on your right is going to be the honorary member of the coin toss. 40 years ago, as we told you, he was president here. He's done a lot, not only for the Rose Bowl, but for college football. That's Art Wells, the current president of the Tournament of the Roses with him. Now you're meeting the captains, Jerry Meter. Number 21. Russell Davis. Here's the rest. Gentlemen, my crew working with me today. Ted Stefano, the back judge. Bill Marchman, the line judge. Don Mason, the umpire. Mr. We're having uh, some problems with the referees, Mike. This is the toss of the coin. And White, the Michigan captain, Jerry Meter, Russell Davis, Lynn Kane. Rick Dimmler are the USC captains. Lay Leishman tossed the coin. And now the referee will signify what's happened here. USC won the toss, will receive on your left. Michigan will defend on your right and there's just a slight breeze. We've been out here, this is my 12th Rose Bowl game in a row, and I can't remember a more perfect afternoon. And we've had some beauties here, but this is just ideal. Oh, Jim Beckler jumping in with his club, a very intense, emotional coach. There they go. And Michigan will spread out to kick off. They have a great defensive ball club. They allow just eight points a game average scored on them. So the high-powered USC offense will have their work cut out. Brian Virgil, a junior from Buchanan, Michigan, will be kicking off. And the Trojans will be spreading out now in receiving formation. USC beat Michigan here in the 77 Rose Bowl game. They beat them rather handily to control the ball most of the time. Charles White is going to be back as one of the receivers. He's the tailback, dangerous runner. And Raymond Butler, an outside receiver, number 86, as the other. Now the crowd of 106,000 warms up, ready to go. And the 65th Rose Bowl game is underway. They kick away from White. It's going out of bounds. And we'll have a re-kick that went out of bounds at about the three-yard line. So back they come. Both teams, by the way, as you'd expect with uh, only one loss, are excellent in covering kickoffs and punts. You may think it's a surprise that Charles White is back for kickoff returns, but he's done that quite a bit this uh, year. Actually, he led the nation in what you call all-purpose running, receiving kickoff returns. He averaged over 170 yards a game in all-purpose running. Of course, he averaged 146 yards a game just rushing. He may not get a chance to look at a kickoff. They don't want him to have the ball. So Brian Virgil again tees it up. I would imagine again he'll try and kick it to Butler. Here we go. He squibs this one. Touched by one of the short men, picked up, and it's down on the 17 yard line, and that's not very good field position for USC. Ball was being handled around there by Mike McDonald. 
All right, here is the backfield for USC. McDonald, the quarterback. Kane, the fullback. White, the tailback. Of course, White is a big man. He's the guy that led him all year this year. But Paul McDonald, he's the guy to watch. If he's hot, SC could be tough. All right, let's watch this first play from Scribby. They run the famed power eye. They're on their 17, first down. They're putting Williams in motion, setting it up as a slot, and back he goes again. Now uh, back again. <laughs> and there's a flag down, and charging offside was number 78, Otis Page. Ron Simpkins made the pass. They had so many men in motion, the same man going so many ways. They had Otis Page confused as he broke offside. It's against USC, a glaring offside. Let's take a look at the uh, receiving core of the University of Southern California. Hunter is the tight end. Cal Sweeney, the split end, the flanker, is little Kevin Williams. They call Kevin Williams the bug. Now, he's an interesting story. He made all Pac-10, but he only caught 17 passes. He only weighs 155 pounds. He didn't do it by blocking, but he did it because he caught 10 touchdowns. Van Horn, Buddy, Peters, Howell, and Page are up front. STSG means strong side. WTWG means weak side tackle and guard. Slot formation. First down, 15. Look at Michigan. Boy, they're in there. Michigan had Curtis Greer, the defensive right tackle. Let's take a look at the Michigan defense hitting Charlie White. They've changed their lineup. Turgovac did not start. Godfrey and Greer are the tackles, and Kites is now at center. Kurt, you'll notice also they're playing an even defense right now. They've got them lined up as if they've got a nose guard. Dale Kites has to have a big day on Ray Peters for Michigan to do well. But they're playing an even defense right now and stuffed them on the first play. They have a second down, 19 USC from their eight-yard line. The pitch is to White, and White not much met at the line of scrimmage we told you the hallmark of michigan is pursuit quickness and gang tackling there are the linebackers jerry meters the co-captain but ron simpkins is the man they try to keep all offensive people off they like to leave him alone see if he can't bring down the ball carry he's had a great year he's a real all-american he should have a big day third down 19 to go. Slot right USC. They're in a hole early in this game. That's Kane, number 21. Very quick starting fullback, Lynn Kane. And he's hit by Andy Canavino. Number 41, the inside. Look at Michigan. They're fired up. They've held him. And now Marty King will come in the punt for the Trojans. And he'll be standing in his end zone when he receives the snap. Mike Jolly is the safety man. Good kick. Tremendous bounce for USC. And that ball is dead by the 28 yard line of Michigan. Jolly let it roll. Go from the line of scrimmage. There's the kicker, Marty King. The backfield for Michigan. All American Rick Leach at quarterback. Davis is the fullback. Huckleby is the tailback. And both of those running backs have run for over 2,500 yards in their three-year career. Well, that was a 64-yard kick by Marty King. No score early. First down, Clayton the flanker in motion. They run the option series. Huckleby, the tailback, is hauled down to the 29-yard line by Dennis Johnson, the strong side inside linebacker. The receivers, the tight end is Gene Johnson, Rodney Feaster, Ralph Clayton are the outside men. Be a perfect day for Rodney Feaster to have a big one. Second down nine, they put Roosevelt Smith in at tailback. Dufek, Bartnick, Nada, Power, Giesler up front for Michigan. Second down and nine. Fake play action pass. Leach fires over the head. Intercepted by the Trojan. Intercepted there by Lott. Lott's back in the Michigan territory and carries the ball down just short of the Michigan 15. Ron Lott, the rover, defensive back. Here we have man in motion. However, it's just a simple little two-man pattern. 
Fake to the running back coming through. No backs out in the pattern. Both wide receivers trying to get a piece of it. Ralph Clayton jumps high, cannot get the ball picked off by Ron Lott. SC's got in great field position on the 16-yard line. It looked like a pre-planned play. He had about six red shirts in front of him just as he caught it. I tell you, John, that's good for SC. It could hurt Michigan not completing passes earlier. A 34-yard return of that interception by Lott. Charlie White slips through a hole, and he goes to the 12-yard line. White rushed for one mile this year, 1,760 yards. There are the defensive backs of Michigan. Bell, Jolly, Brayman, and Harden. Jolly knows he's got his hands full today. He'll be outside on a corner on Kevin Williams most of the day. Rock. Shannon is in now, tied in. Number 80. There he is in motion. Cut back. White slips inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, Charlie White. Ron Simpkins, who leads Michigan in tackles, back the all-time tackling record, 174 for the season, made that last hit on Charlie White. If you notice, SC has been trying to establish an off-tackle and outside running game. I think they may be a little concerned about running up the middle. Ray Peters, the guy who's starting at center for USC, is the sixth-string center. They had an incredible string of bad luck with their center. Take a look at Peters there. He played nose guard up to this year, and they moved him to center when they lost everyone. Third down and three for the Trojans. <laughs> down and lost the throw, and he's got it for a touchdown. He hit his receiver in the end zone for the touchdown. And Hobie, Hobie Brenner. Hobie Brenner, where'd he come from? <laughs> He's listed as about a four-stringer. Juice just said he wasn't in his game plan. <laughs> Hobie Brenner caught that ball. We got him hot. <laughs> okay, Paul McDonald, little fake in there, Lynn Kane. He comes off. Actually, it was excellent defensive coverage. You see, he's getting pretty good pressure, puts the ball the only place it can be thrown. And Hobie Brenner comes up with six. He is a sophomore. He's not even listed in the first three deep. The kick is up by Frank Jordan. The kick is good, and USC has jumped out in front, and that's what Michigan was trying to avoid. First down, Michigan on their 20. Huckleby and Russell Davis running back. And bursting through over the 25 to the 26-yard line is Russell Davis from Woodbridge, Virginia, who averaged four and a half yards a carry. He was injured this year with an ankle. Huckleby's had a knee. They've had all kinds of injury problems in their backfield. Larry McGrew made the hit, and he's in the linebacking core for USC. I see another freshman in that lineup, Juice. But Ricky Gray's a starter. He's been doing it for him all year long. Second down, four. Clayton is in motion. Here's the option. Leach pitches out. Huckabee fumbles the ball. And may have it again. He does. The pitch to Harlan Huckleby off the option, the tailback. And they were fortunate recovering there deep in their own territory. And, Kurt, you always wonder how they're going to defense the option play. Sometimes they'll take their option to, to crash down the line, hit the quarterback before he can get anything started. Other times you'll see them pursue from the inside out. It looks like SC's plan is to go from the inside out, let Leach get down the line a bit, hope he cuts up, and stuff him when he does. And we gave you the secondary, Lavender, Brazil in the corners, Lots the rover, and Dennis Smith for safety. Third down, seven for Michigan. Leach in a straight drop back. Out they spread. He's firing deep. He's got Clayton open, and it's over his hand. Ralph Clayton was out there in the open. He's averaged 22 yards a catch this year, and the leading receiver with 23 receptions. You can see why they throw a lot of play action passes. That was typical of their style. Clayton gets down, gets down on the defender very fast. Larry Brazil trying to handle him. However, he just kind of dissects that double zone, gets down to where he is pretty well open. Leach would like to have that ball back. John, I think it was a little mix up back there. It looked like SC was playing zone and they had a little mix up at who had the deep outside coverage. Whenever a man's that open, it always looks that way. <laughs> Hunt formation, Greg Wilner's averaged 40 yards a kick. Butler is back, a wide receiver, a low kick. Bounces right into him. He should get a return on it, and he fell down. Anytime you get that low kick to you, you have a chance for a good return. 
Michael Petch was down here covering the punt for Michigan. When we return, the Trojans have the ball, and they're in the lead with 9-11 to go in the first period, 7-0. Paul McDonald, this is the power eye. He's going to throw. He's a left-hander out to White. White's at the 40. They like to get him out there on a flare pass and let him go to work one-on-one -on, -one on somebody. Andy Canavino and Gene Bell made the stop. Kurt, actually, that looked like a little quick screen there. They had a big tackle getting out there with him, and I think they were trying to throw a little quick screen, screen out there. They want you to watch the handoffs sometimes. The quarterback, McDonald, will retreat deep in the USC backfield and hand it off to the tailback much deeper than any other college team. There's a reason for that. No Jay Simpson who used to take many of those handoffs. There it is right there. That's White coming through. Boy, he's got more. He's got a first down as he's into uh, Michigan territory. Why the deep handoff to the tailback, O.J.? Well, SC is a, a, a philosophy is what they call option running. The offensive line will block solid throughout the line. You line up deep, you get the ball deep, you can see where the holes are. Sometimes the hole may be on the other side of the line of scrimmage, and if you're too close, you can't see it. But if you're deep enough, uh, you can see the whole line, and you can pick your hole. And oh, it's nice to have an offensive tackle like Otis Page to create one. That certainly helps. First down. Southern Cal and the Michigan 48. Southern Cal's ahead 7-0. Eight minutes to play in the first period. That time they trip up Lynn Kane. Lynn Kane has been a very important cog in this USC team. He came here as a tailback. They converted him to fullback. He's the all-time leading rushing fullback with 893 yards. An excellent blocker. Very quick off the mark. Yeah, when Lynn first came here, they thought he was going to be the next great uh, SC tailback. He was player of the year in junior college ball here. He had some problems with his legs with injuries. They moved him to fullback and he's done an excellent job for the school. Second down nine. They're in a slot formation. The left-hander McDonald. He's trapped. They get to him. They knock him down back at his 45-yard line. And that's Chris Godfrey who is playing left tackle, number 90, who and, got to him. And Kurt, he did it. He did it the hard way because up front, those three down linemen, the two guards in the center did their job. Ray Peters, we've been looking at. He's got to do a good job on the nose, man. Kites is coming after him. He gets a little help from his left tackle. And he gets just enough help because there was very little penetration up front. Godfrey did it all on his own. Yeah, Ray Peters did an excellent job. Uh, the guard, buddy, should have went out and helped Otis Page that time. <laughs> Third and 15. McDonald, the white. White just short of the 50-yard line. They thought Michigan would be looking for the pass, so they tried to quick opener up the middle. Michigan has stopped them. Godfrey again on the tackle. And now Marty King comes in to punt. And his first punt of 64 yards helped set up the first score of the game. Because uh, in Michigan territory, USC intercepted a pass. Michael Jolly is back as a safety man. Marty King kicks it right to him on the hop. Taken on to 15 by Jolly. Look at that coverage. Five. Cardinal and goal. Trojans down there to smother him. And it'll be Michigan's ball first down when we return to the Rose Bowl with a score 7-0 USC. And of course, if Michigan wins, they think they could have it. Look at that hole open. That was uh, Ricky Gray who made the tackle. And carrying the ball was Russell Davis on the quick opener. John, what do you think about it all? I think Michigan's concerned with winning this football game, and uh, they'd have to leapfrog an awful lot of people. And I, and I think USC better be concerned with winning this football game because right now is all that matters, and all that other stuff is up to other people's vote. They do their part. They can be satisfied. That'll all be settled later. On the 24-yard line of Michigan, the Wolverines have a second down and two. Ralph Flayton going out of motion. Leach keeps the ball. Now pitches to Huckleby. Huckleby has a first down on the option play. Huckleby averaged 5.3 yards this year. Gained 713 for the year and missed three games with a bad knee. I'm a little surprised that Leach is running the option to the right. He's left-handed. Uh, he runs well to the left. And as we said before, with the, 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 the defensive end for USC on that side is Dennis Edwards. He's a freshman, and he hasn't played all year. And I thought they would test him a little more than what they're doing right now. 5.47 left in the first period. USC leading 7-0. 
Alan Mitchell is in the game as a wide receiver, number 30, replacing Feaster. Out in motion is Clayton. Leach to the tailback. Huckleby, that was a deep handoff. Huckleby trying the middle, got to his 34. Ran into the freshman Ricky Gray and Dennis Johnson, the two inside linebackers. And Michigan knows if they're going to be in the game, have a good chance to win, they've got to win at the line of scrimmage. That time, Greg Bartnick, Steve Nauta, John Powers, the three of them up front did their job. They have two tight ends for Michigan. Gene Johnson, 88. Doug Marsh, 80. A little more blocking power. Look at those impressive statistics. He holds a string of records now at the University of Michigan. Ridley keeps the ball, throws it out to Huckleby. Huckleby slammed out of bounds on the 42-yard line, but has another first down, driven out by Johnson and Dennis Smith. All right, three years ago, you might have seen uh, Rick Leach fire that ball out to his to his running back. This time, just perfect touch. He's got pretty good. He's got a pretty good rush on him. Lays the ball up just where Huckleby needs it. They pick up a first down, and they're on the march. And here's Huckleby. Huckleby is a speed man. If they have a breakaway man, he's the man here. I think they have to do this more today. They got to throw little swing passes. I don't think Leach should get impatient and try to throw downfield. Their running game thus far has been going real well for them. They're on their 41 with the first down. Alan Mitchell in motion. Keeper, Leach, the reverse pivot. Comes over the 45 to the 47. They're opening holes now. Leach stopped by Ricky Gray and Gary Cobb. This is something you can't teach. He's got a few options, but just as he spins, he's got to make a, he's got to make a move on Dennis Johnson, who absolutely got annihilated out of the <laughs> hole. He, he took the proper break, and he's got it to where they need three for first. They're on their 47 with a second and four. The clock moving. Four and a half to play in the first period. USC out in front, 7-0. They scored with 10.47 to go in the first period. That's Russell Davis, the fullback. Davis is hit by Dennis Edwards, a freshman, and Rich Dimmler, the nose guard. Marv Go, the assistant coach at USC, says he is the toughest nose guard they ever had there. And if Marv Goo said that, he's got to be some sort of cat. I right? tell you, Marv Goo recruited me. They used to call him my daddy when I was at SC, made sure I went to class. But Marv Goo has coached 11 All-Americans, and if he said that about Dimmler, Dimmler must be a tough kid. The tight ends are bringing the plays in. Ralph Clayton's back in now. Mitchell's out. Third down and a yard to go for Michigan on the 50-yard line. They have marched upfield here on this drive. Uh-oh, they jump. That was John Geisler. Geisler 68. USC came, got back, and then Geisler moved, and right now he's feeling very inopportune time dejected. for him to jump. Yeah, I tell you, that's a good move for SC because Michigan is moving the ball pretty well against them, and uh, I think Leach will have to throw on this play. I think SC won't Leach to throw the football. Well, they may uh, <laughs> before he throws it. Well, at this point in the game, I think they'd like to see him put it up in the air. He's only thrown it downfield really once, and that's what's got him in trouble. It's not the style of Michigan. They generally don't come out firing that ball all over, as you say. They've only thrown an, an average of about 16, 17 passes a game. But I think you're going to see a lot more of it. They have a third and six now instead of a third and one. They have Roosevelt Smith there. They have a blitz on. And they go. They they had everybody but the kitchen sink coming that time. And they disguised it very well because they, they waited till Leach could not get into an audible. They didn't have anybody to pick up the, the, the blitzing linebacker coming right up the middle. Leach had nowhere to go. You can see he's barely the first guy back there. You're going to see number 49, Dennis Smith, the safety, come flying in there. They had a safety blitz on, and they just couldn't pick up all the men. It's like they had a meeting back there. That's what it looks like from Leach's uh, viewpoint. Not too good. Punt formation. Greg Wilner will do the kicking. Raymond Butler is a safety man. The ball is bouncing to the USC 31-yard line where the Trojans have it. I want to remind you, right after the Rose Bowl game, we'll switch you to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Nebraska, the official Big 8 champs, 9-2 against Oklahoma, 10-1. and 
These are two really potent offensive clubs. You'll see Billy Sims, the Heisman Trophy winner. What do you think of Billy Sims, O.J.? You watched him on TV this year. Well, with all due respect to my man Charles White, I thought Billy Sims was the finest runner I've seen in college ball this year. He can do it all. He's an exciting runner. He's a little bigger than Charles, and uh, I thought he should have won the Heisman Trophy. Well, you're an honest man. First down, USC on your 31. Charles White. White is cut down on the 34-yard line of USC. You keep watching Michigan, and you notice how quick they are, how quickly they move laterally. Well, they better, <laughs> because that number 12 can scoot. You know, his biggest thrill, and he's had a lot of them, he now has gained more yards than any running back in the history of the Pac-10 conference. Big deal. Big deal. <laughs> Sorry to say so. He's got another year to go, too, O.J. <laughs> He's tough. Well, I'll tell you about his big throw, though. Donald getting the cover in. Now he's wrapped up by Tom Sebron, the outside linebacker, 91, who chased him down. And give the secondary credit. They're the ones that kept any receiver from coming open. McDonald had all the time he needed under normal circumstance to get the pass off. Sebron got there late from his outside backer position. You can see as McDonald goes back, He's looking to Calvin Sweeney. He's covered by Jolly. He has nowhere to go with the ball, and Sebron comes up from behind. They have a third and 14. Godfrey had just limped off for Michigan, and Dale Kites has gone in to replace him at tackle. Third down, 14. USC under 27. They're ahead, 7 0. Minute and a half to go in the first period. They're spread out all over now as McDonald fades. There's a pass way over the head of Sweeney. Calvin Sweeney, he missed him. Let's take a look at Sweeney as we isolate on him. Mentioned early that Jolly has got his work cut out covering Sweeney and Kevin Williams. This time gets a little help with a little hit. As he makes his turn, he was open. The ball came just a little late, a little bit high, and it isn't too nice if you don't come down with the ball. Well, even if he would have caught it, he wouldn't have had the first down. It's sort of uh, surprising that he didn't run another two yards for the first down uh, yardage. He averages over 20 yards a catch during the season. Mighty King is left. Jolly has a flag down. They ran into King. Let's see what they call this. You can incidentally run into a kicker in college football, and they won't call it. it it's got to be flagrant roughing. And they dropped the flag back there on the punt. It was a low punt. Both clubs are putting pressure on the punters now. And they're talking with Michigan. That's uh, Jerry Meter, number 46, the captain. Roughing the kicker. Well, we'll see somebody come out of the right side of that screen in just a second. Obviously, he was. He, it looked as if he was blocked into him, but there were two or three fellas all made contact. And I think he got a job out at the studios, you know, maybe Universal. <laughs> he did a good job there. <laughs> they needed 14 yards. The extra yard, there's a good hit on Charles White by Dale Kites. They got the 15-yard penalty. Roughing the kicker in college football is not an automatic first down. That was a perfect example of uh, some of the problems you might have when you have a six-string center playing for you. Kites just shot the gap in there, and he, he really shouldn't have had that much penetration and made an excellent play. We're in the last minute of the first period of the Rose Bowl game with USC out in front, 7 nothing. We've had some great charges by the defensive linemen, both teams. White again, he's hit and pulled down on his 41-yard line. Bo Schembechler said, O.J., it's phenomenal how they'll let a back carry the ball 30 times a game. Way wide. How many, uh, you averaged over 35 times a game, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, about 38. I think one, you run so much in practice, you run about twice that amount of time in practice. But the big thing is, SC will always have a big, strong, sturdy offensive line. And I think a back can carry the ball quite a bit if he has big, strong linemen because defensive linemen are not tackling them. And if they're tackling them, your offensive line is not doing the job. Third down, 11. Trojans operating out of the eye. Oh, he's hit. The ball's loose. Michigan has it. Tom Sieber, 91 in there. Smacked into it. Dale Kites recovered the fumble. 
and Michigan has the ball. They hit him before his hand started forward. And that is the worst lick a quarterback can take. When he, when he gets a hit from his blind side, and Paul McDonald's blind side is his right since he's left-handed. He was looking down to the short side of the field, had no idea that Seabrook was on his way, and the lights went out. Oh, that's a charged-up ball club. Yeah, they are. SC's offense hasn't done much today. Uh, I saw that Paul was injured, or seemed to be injured right there, and if he goes out, SC could be in a lot of trouble. That 91 Seabrook has really been penetrating. He's got a key because he's getting loose. Nobody seems to be in his way. They've got to find a way to get it. And we've come to the end of the first uh, period with a score, USC 7 and Michigan nothing. On the SC 23. Out of the eye, Leach keeps. And lunges forward to the 20-yard line. Ricky Gray, the weak side linebacker, the freshman from Tucson, Arizona, made the stop on him. This is the magic quarter for USC. Get this. This year, in the second quarter, they scored 128 points. Their opponents scored six. The magic quarter for Michigan is the third period when they scored 90 points to just seven for the opponent. So we'll see how USC fares in the second period against the fired-up Michigan ball club. They're going to need a lot of magic, it looks like, right now. Second down, eight. Clayton going in motion. Leach on the keeper. Flares it out. He's got him out there, and he dropped the ball. Huckleby could have gone for the first down. He could have. He might have gone all the way downtown. There was nobody in the area. And that's the second time they've ran that play, and that the, the second time nobody was near him. They ran it earlier in the first quarter. Huckleby picked up a first down, and I think he would have scored there. Well, Juice, if you have watched Michigan play over the years, they've thrown very few passes to their running backs. I'm sure that SC knows that. However, Rick Leach has turned, has turned the tempo around a bit. He's thrown to his backs. He's had a few wide receivers open. It's just a matter of time if he keeps pumping. They have a third and eight. Huckleby's caught one pass of this game. He had received only five all year. Third down, eight. And they stop at the 18-yard line, Russell Davis. They're trying to get a trap and a quick opener there, but Rich Dimmler, the nose guard, 255, said, huh-uh. So let's see what they do now. They have a fourth down and six. They're at the 18-yard line of USC. And B.J. Dickey, sophomore, will hold. And doing the kicking will be Greg Wilder. He had six out of 12 this year. This will be a 36-yard attempt. The kick is up, up, and the kick is good. Michigan is on the board. 36-yard field goal with 13-37 to go in the first half. That's Saturday, January 20th for the 11th annual Vitalis U.S. Olympic track meet. Kicking off, Brian Virgil for Michigan, Charles White, Raymond Butler deep for USC. And this one is handled by Butler. The 20, breaks away, he's at the 30, 35, 40, 45, still going, and is down in Michigan territory at the Michigan 49. Gerald Diggs got him, number 29, a junior from Chicago. Marcus Allen, number 33, was out front, made two or three blocks. Uh, he did just about all a man leading the ball carrier can do. You're going to hear a lot about Marcus Allen in the years to come. He's a top player from, from, from San Diego, and he may be the big tail back in the, after Charles White leaves SC. But you see me broke back to his left, picked up some blockings, and there's Mark, Marcus Allen hustling for him in front of him. He tried to cut back there, just couldn't quite make it. 41-yard return. McDonald's handoff deep to White. White's knocked down. Nice trying to get that picket line going. He's really in trouble now. They've got him contained and finally haul him out. They take him out on his own 40-yard line. Mike Jolly, the halfback. All right, Juice, what do you do when the, when the doors are all shut? Well, being a competitor, Charles White's a competitor. Sometimes they say the best thing to do is run straight ahead and try. Just try to minimize the yards you lose. But a competitor, hey, he's going to fight. He's going to run. He's going to hustle. He's going to go back. Hopefully, hopefully he pick up a picket line. He didn't pick up the picket line. He knows he's in trouble now. And the only thing you can do is run. I mean, and you run as fast as you can and try to turn there up. There were no windows in that long cabin. None. 
The problem here is they're getting too much penetration on SC. Second down, 21 to go. Lynn Kane, quick opener. He's to his 47-yard line. Andy Canavino stopped him, a sophomore and inside linebacker. Well, you know, Kurt, you know Bo Schimblecker has told his team about SC's second quarter statistics. And I'm sure they've, they've, they've thought a lot about it coming in here that let's contain SC in the second quarter, and we may have some kind of psychological advantage over them. And I'm, that's why they're doing a good job of it. Knowing it is one thing, handling's another. <laughs> well, they're doing a good job of it now, John. They have a third down, 15. On their own 46, USC, they're leading 7-3. Early in the second period, McDonald to White. White, they're right on him. White struggling for yardage today. He's averaged nearly 150 yards a game. Mike Turkovac drove him out of bounds. And Mike White's had uh, about 15 yards and 11 carries. Johnny Robinson is talking to him, the coach. White was a little upset, and his punt formation now as Michigan looks very strong on defense. Well, I think the thing with White now, he's, he's geared up, he's ready to go, and he's just not getting any room to run in. He's getting a little frustrated. He got up and had a few words to say that time. Marty King will punt it. Mike Jolly feels it on his 13, 15, and is whammed into on his 18, 17 yard line. This is a case where it was a low punt. When Jolly gets it, however, he doesn't have enough of his pals around. He's got to take <laughs> Duck, get all he can, but they're all red shirts. It'll be Michigan's ball when we return with a score. USC 7 and Michigan 3. Pacific Coast teams have won eight of the last nine Rose Bowl games. Ohio State, the only team to win in that stretch in 74, beating USC 42-21. And does the Big Ten want this one today? Hmm. Michigan on their 17 with a first down. Leach, Davis, Huckabee. It goes Clayton out in motion. Leach keeps the ball, running the option. Stopped on the 19-yard line, a two-yard gain. He's a remarkable athlete. Dennis Johnson, the junior, helping on the tackle. All right, that's true, but it looks like SC would like to have Rick Leach run because they haven't put a lot of pressure on him to pitch the ball out. They're waiting for him to turn up where they can make the play. It's almost like a quarterback sack when you get a piece of that quarterback. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. Uh, Leach is a pretty smart runner, too. He knows when to get down on the ground, you know. He is the only quarterback to score or pass for over 200 points and rush for over 200 points in his career, in the history of college football. He's going to do a straight drop back. He's hit. He gets away. He's down. And a six-yard line. And in on him was number 96, Myron Lapka from Chatsworth, California, the junior left tackle who had a tremendous charge off the ball. Well, generally, Rick Leach gets a lot of time to throw. This is another play-action pass. Lapka wasn't buying any of it. He gets by Bill Dufek. And really, Le Leach looked like he had gotten out of the problem, slipped on the turf, and fell down. Neither one of these quarterbacks had time back there for a cup of coffee and a sandwich today. They're both getting curious pass rushes. Well, thus far, it's been a game of the defensive lines. Third down, 21. Michigan on their six. Mitchell's out. Hand off to Davis. Davis hits hard on the nine-yard line by the safety, Dennis Smith. You know, they said that uh, both Shim Black and Bleeds in the pass now. You'll find out just how much faith they have in the pass when they're back is against the wall and they had to meet a lot of yardage. You got to have a lot of faith in it, Don. Chris, I, I don't blame him at this time. I mean, I don't think it's the time to throw the ball. They're very much in the ball game. They know they've waited for their defense to come up with a big play, get them a turnover, and they're just not geared to throw the ball 26, 27 yards. And they're uh, going over to the sideline. I believe it's Dimler. Dimler asked the official to uh, blow the whistle so he could go over, and Brad Steelman, nose guard, came in to replace him. This will be a punt formation now. Greg Wilner to do the kicking, and the dangerous returner, Raymond Butler, who you saw just run a kickoff back 41 yards. He's the deep man. They're going after him. He just got it away, but it's a beauty. Butler on his 48 with the 50. 
swarmed under on the Michigan 49. And leading that charge downfield was Tony Leone from Flint, Michigan, along with Ben Needham from Groveport, Ohio. All right, we have 10 minutes to play in the first half with a timeout. Trojans 7, Wolverines 3. Well, thus far, SC is down 3 nothing in the second quarter. A little reputation is on the line here. <laughs> Two tenacious defenses checking each other. Paul McDonald, a junior, he'll be back next year, brings him up. They're on the Michigan 49. That's Kane ripping through to the 41. Lynn Kane is stopped by Gene Bell, number 42. And watch this block by Charles White. I guess when you're not carrying the ball, you must be active. <laughs> Blocking behind the, the runner. And that, that is shows a you're into the game. That's a defensive tackle, Curtis Greer. And there's a little size difference. Once he once he hit him, he wasn't satisfied. He went after him again. Shows the man's in the game, huh? <laughs> Second down two. Again, the hole open for Lynn Kane. We're going to him now. They've been checking Charlie White. White has only 13 yards and 11 carries. And now it's Kane. I'll tell you, Kurt, I, I've got a question, Juice. They seem to be more effective running right up the gut. Now, SC's, SC's uh, personality has been to run wide. You call it student body right, student body left. But they have been effective when they run up the gut. Well, I think it's because of Michigan's defense is so quick. We'll get into that after this play. Kane for the third straight carry. Listen to these figures to show you how ferocious these defenses have been. Total yardage for Michigan in this game. 24 yards, 17 on the ground, seven passing. USC, 14 passing, minus four rushing. Total of 10 yards. Yeah, one of the problems, that with, if there's a problem with lining up so deep at tailback is if you play against a quick team, the pursuit can get there by the time you get to the line of scrimmage, and that's what's been happening. Michigan's defense is so quick, they're meeting Charles at the point of attack. So they're hitting them quick, just like this, up the middle. That's what they're doing now, Lynn Kane. For the fourth time in a row, he's had the ball, he's had room, and he is quick. Simpkins makes the hit on him. All right, Ron Simpkins has got his work cut out for him. He's got Buddy coming down the line, Adam Howell coming down the line. Peters is doing his job in the middle on kites. And Lynn Kane is picking up the yardage. Lynn Kane is the big ball carrier in this game at 26 yards. He averaged five yards a carry, scored four touchdowns this season. First down. There's a hole for him. Right. His biggest gain of the day. The SC. SC hitting them quick up the middle. Forces the defense to play a little tighter. But forces the linebackers to respect Lynn Kane. And then those off tackle holes begin to open. I believe and Charles White hit it quick. He got outside real quick. And this is just right here. Just all effort. All desire. I think sending Kane up the middle has really changed things now. I know this, Charles White likes it when he sees a little daylight. If you get past the point of attack with the ball in your hand, those defensive backs can't do a job on you. First down, goal to go. Trojans on the Michigan five. Kane goes to the three and a diving thrust. Or Charles White on the diving thrust, hit by Turgovac and Mike Harden. And you notice the tight end, Vic Rakshani. He came back and then peeled into the line to try and lead the blocking. Three-yard line, second down, three to go for a USC touchdown. 7.45 to go. Bo Schembechler is anxious. You're talking about tough. This is the toughest part of the football field to gain anything on. White again. And a fumble. It's a big fumble. They say he was over. Doesn't matter what happens after he's above or over the goal line. He had crossed or was over the goal line and scored. We may have a chance to see it, but if he if he did fumble the ball when he hit the ground, he definitely was in the end zone. Well, I'm for SC, but I thought <laughs> I thought he had lost control of it before he got into the end zone. But hopefully, we'll get a chance to see it again. Right after the point after touchdown, we'll take a good look at it, and you will judge for yourself. Frank Jordan, who has kicked two dramatic field goals two years ago against UCLA and against Notre Dame this year, will try the point. It is up, and the point is good. 
for USC now builds their lead with 14 to 3. Now let's take a look at this play at the goal line with Charlie White bucking in. We'll let them look for themselves. I can't even see the ball, let alone whether oh, I can't drop. see the ball. It looked like the ball was behind him, though, John. But all he had to do is break the plane of the end zone and it counts. I thought he had lost it. See the ball below. The ball is right there. Now, what you can't tell is whether he was over the plane of the end zone when the ball fell out. And I don't think we should put ourselves in a position of judgment when we're not on that goal line. They're well, on the goal line. Well, I'm not on the goal line. I'm for a but I thought he fumbled the ball, John. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad. We must be living right, you know, down here in Southern California because it's seven points no matter how you look at it now. Now, well, Michigan will have a lot of controversy to say about that. Boy, Simpkins, Simpkins made a good he made a good play to get a piece of that ball and get it out of White's hand. Had a controversial play in an earlier Rose Bowl game. Art McCoskey of Northwestern uh, at the goal line. Many say he fumbled. They called it a touchdown against the University of California. You know something, Kurt? That things like this often have a way of equalizing themselves out. They'll, they'll even out as the game goes on. Here's the kick coming to Tony Jackson. Jackson up to his 28-yard line. To stop there. All right, we're trying to determine clearly whether or not he had the ball in the end zone in possession. I think he loses it right here. I think the ball is lost immediately. Immediately right there. Watch where the ball uh, lands. It's, ha it's hard to tell. It certainly dropped on the playing field. Michigan on their 28 with a first down. Leach to Huckabee. Huckleby to his 35, hit by Ricky Gray, the inside linebacker. They have their fingers crossed at Huckleby to, uh, today to see how long he can last. There's Charles White, who just scored the touchdown. One more year for him at USC. Now, the thing about Huckleby, he is their only legitimate breakaway threat out of the backfield. He was a member of their mile relay team that finished third in the NCAA finals this year, and they won the big team. Second down, three. Michigan on their 35. Trailing 14 to 3. Just under 7 to play in the first half. And that was Russell Davis on the option. He was the first man through. He was hit by Gary Cobb, the strong side linebacker from Stamford, Connecticut. Interesting story on Cobb that OJ was telling us about. Yeah, Ricky Cobb, you know, his father didn't graduate from high school until he was 25. Yet he has uh, two brothers and a sister who went to college on academic scholarships in the Ivy League, uh, no doubt. And he could have gone to uh, SC on academic scholarship, but he chose the football scholarship. Great story. Michigan is on their 39. They have Roosevelt Smith now at tailback. Leach is going to pass. He has a man open. He hits him. That's Clayton. Ralph Clayton, the wing back. Caught that ball's out of bounds on the Trojan 40. Dennis Smith, the safety man, knocked him out of bounds. And when you force the safety man to come all the way over to the outside zone, it's a little bit much to ask of him. Leach runs a little play action pass, comes out, hits Clayton right in between the two, two zone defenders. Well thrown ball. I, I tell you what they're doing, John. They're, they're, they're running the receiver down the sideline, and they're running the tailback. Hokeby out in the flat, forcing the corner to come up to cover Hokeby, and there's a big hole in there before the safety can get over to cover that deep outside. Michigan on the USC 40 with a first down. Leaps to Roosevelt Smith. He's playing on a bad ankle. Rick Dimler and Ricky Gray made the hit on him to stop him. And we're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, O.J. Simpson, the Rose Bowl, Pasadena, 5.52 to go in the first half. The Trojans ahead 14 to three. Alabama has defeated Penn State today, 14 to seven. Notre Dame nipped Houston 35-34. Harlan Huckabee back in the game, and he can't get outside for much. He goes down on the 36-yard line of USC. Gary Cobb 
pursuing him across the field, and the cornerback, Larry Brazil. Actually, that was a good play. They picked up about five yards. It would have been a good first down play. It's the first time they really got outside real quick today. It looked like he was going to get much more yards than he ended up getting. And they're back in that very untenable position of third down and seven. And they've sent in Roosevelt Smith, the tailback. Gene Johnson is a tight end. Third down, seven. Leach has the time. His receiver had about four men in front of him. Dennis Smith was the man that deflected it and thought he should have caught it. Well, he's right. Yeah, I tell you one thing, they had Roosevelt Smith fake over the middle and run into the flat, and he was open for the first down. Roosevelt Smith started in the Rose Bowl last year. Fourth down, seven. Dennis Smith from Santa Monica, sophomore. This was not supposed to be USC's year. This is a young team. They thought their vintage year might be next season, and they got most of them back. It's, uh, they've done all right this year. What will they be next year? They should be tougher. You know, Otis Page is starting that tackle for him on offense. They lost an All-American, Anthony uh, Munoz, and he'll be back next year, so they should be tougher. They're going for it. Fourth and seven. They're gambling. Leach, scrambling around. The pass. Not close at the 30-yard line. And the man that hit him was Gary Cobb. Russell Davis was waiting for the ball. Just as he got to him, Cobb belted him from behind. All right, easy to second guess right now, but I love it. When a team has enough, enough confidence in themselves to go for something, fourth and seven, around midfield, they must have confidence in their defense. They know they've got to get back in the ball game. They're not going to wait for the next half to do it. Leach does his job. Unfortunately, Russell Davis doesn't come down with the ball. With 4.47 remaining in the first half, the score in the Rose Bowl is USC 14 and Michigan 3. You know, Kurt, you were talking about SC's phenomenal second quarter. They outscored the opponent 10-3 uh, to 3 in the second quarter today, but Michigan is noted for their third quarter. Let's see how they do in it. Roosevelt Smith is starting the second half, and he uh, hits one over the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Stopped by Ricky Gray and Larry McGrew. Your backfield, Rick Leach, the quarterback. Roosevelt Smith is the tailback. Russell Davis is the fullback. They're alternating the tight ends. Doug Marsh coming on the field in place of Gene Johnson. Feaster and Clayton are the wide receivers. Geisler, Powers, Nada, Bartnick, and Dufek are up front. Second down, five, Michigan on their 26. Piled up is Russell Davis. Davis piled up by Ricky Gray and Larry McGrew. The play that Russell was just running is what they call a 32 trap. You know, SC had some success on one on one series running a 32 trap when we saw Kane shooting up the middle. And you know what SC got that play from? Michigan. Two years ago when they were playing Michigan, they couldn't stop Rob Hurdle on that play. So they start running Rick Kane on that play. Let's take a look. You know, you, you're talking about about the effectiveness of, of people up front. I really think it's been pretty even that way. You see the real problem statistically, two for 10 for Leach, that's got to improve. Leach flares it out, he hits his receiver. That is Roosevelt Smith, and Smith is close to a first down, tackled by Brazil. Roosevelt Smith made an excellent play to get the first down. They may measure, but it's a first down. A back must know where that 10 yard chain is. He knew, had to make a good individual move, got got by the two linebackers picked up the first well thrown ball out in the flat hits him right on the run and this is the same play they threw to Huckabee a couple of times in the first half as I said they had a first down one time and he dropped the ball the other time but each time the guy has been open for positive yardage first down Michigan on their own 32 yard line Alan Mitchell going in motion the handoff is to Roosevelt Smith. He breaks it out to the 38-yard line, hit there by Rich Demler. You saw the total yards in the first half. 74 for Michigan, 63 for USC. These two teams both averaged over 400 yards a game on offense during the season. So they have really run against a couple of tough defenses. Well, you bet. They haven't played this kind of defensive team, either one of them. 
And when you play teams like this on defense, you have to take advantages of the mistakes. SC capitalized on an interception early. They got a break for a touchdown later, and Michigan didn't capitalize on a fumble. Second down, five. Leach to the tailback. That's Roosevelt Smith. He's stopped by Charles Moses, the weak side linebacker, number 55 in the game, a senior from Ontario, California. They are on their own 41-yard line. They have third down and a yard to go. John Robinson, his third year. He's had two seasons, 11 and one. Last year, they had a slump, eight and four. But he's taken them to three bowl games in a row. Third down and one. They run the option. Roosevelt Smith. And he does not have it. Great pursuit there by the rover, Ron Lott, number 42, who chased him across and wouldn't let him get up to that yardstick. And SC's defensive quickness is so astounding that they just let Leach kind of keep going, keep going, work himself into a corner by the, with the sideline. They've got such fine pursuit, they just let him go nowhere. Here comes Rick. He's coming out, out. He's looking for somebody to option on. However, there is nobody. They're attacking from the inside out. Their cornerbacks are coming up. Their Wolfman makes a great play. They're in punting situation. Greg Wilner to punt. Raymond Butler is the deep man. Kicks that off the side of his foot. It's to the short man on the 35-yard line. And uh, catching that ball was Willie Crawford. So USC will go on the attack early in the third period. Southern Cal will put the ball in play on their own 35-yard line. Michigan lining up. They'll have Turgovac at middle guard. Greer and Kites. Flanking him, and there goes Lynn Kane. He's been the top ball carrier for USC. Lynn Kane right up the middle, and the free safety had to bang him down. As I said, the, the, where they got that play for is called a 32 trap. Here it is, right up. It's just a trap right up the middle, and they got that play from Michigan. Uh, Coach uh, Robinson said that they tried to def defense this play in practice and never could do it, so they decided to put it in. And Tried very to defense it two years ago, yeah. Kane had 38 yards rushing in the first half. Charlie White held a 35. There goes White. And White's in the Michigan territory. Stumbling down on the Michigan 47. Ron Simpkins, number 40, brought him down. Anytime White goes below 100 yards, that's news. Southern Cal on the Michigan. Let's call it the Michigan 48. Second down, six. Buck Williams in motion. At the 46-yard line, Charlie White hit by Mark Brayman and Ron Simpkins again. Boy, and when that Ron Simpkins hits you, he lays the wood. Third and four for USC. On the Michigan 46, White now 41 yards, 17 carries. He's paid a price for every one of those yards. Too. Less than three yards average for him a carry. He averaged 147 yards a game this year on the ground. They're going to run White for it. White is stopped at the 43-yard line. He appears to be short of the first down. Again, Ron Simpkins, number 40. We have a flag dropped. All right, they say they try to keep their offensive blockers away from him, give him a chance to get to the ball carrier. You can see they're trying to shield him, but he handles he handles the blocker that does get on him and keeps him short of a first down. This penalty appears to be going against USC. They were penalized only once in the first half for five yards. They're marking this one off. And a lot of people would ask, why would they take a penalty when it's fourth down and two and they felt he might have to punt? However, I don't think USC would have elected to punt. They were well into Michigan territory. They could have kept their drive alive by getting a, a yard, yard and a half. Now they're in no man's land, third and 20. And I don't think 20 is right. I don't think at this point in time, uh, Coach Robinson is going to try to pick it all up now. They have a 17-3 lead. He probably played very conservative at this point in time. 
There goes White in motion. On, Ten minutes to play in the third period. Shows how much I know. McDonald's with it. Fumbles! And who has it? USC recovered. Looked like John Geisler. Gary Meter was there. And then Keith Van Horn got underneath him. Meter had the first shot at it. Let it get away from him. This is the same thing that happened to him uh, uh, earlier in the game when he fumbled. He didn't even see the man. And you can see he paid the price. He dropped the ball. And that's one of the reasons they should have ran a conservative play. Well, that's good. That's That hindsight's 20-20, pal. <laughs> Marty King in punt formation. Time on the official. Marty King in the first half. Averaged 48 yards a punt, mostly on the bounce. Well, I've gotten a little res more respect for Paul McDonald. He's taking some shots today, and he's he's still coming back in there playing. Michael Jolly is the safety man. They're going to try and do what they can to block this punt. They go after him. Another low boot. Jolly takes it on the 35. He's to the 40. Oh, he ran into that red-shirted wall that's always down there. They really get down there on those punts. Michigan has a first down on their own 40-yard line. They're 14 points behind. They're approaching the midway mark of the third period. Leach is looking. Flares it out. He's got up to Roosevelt Smith. And Smith is stopped at the 46 by Gary Cobb, the strong side out linebacker. Kurt, they're giving him that, that pass. I think it's very sane if they take advantage of it, pick it up on first down. One of these times, he's going to break away from those linebackers trying to recover. They're giving up everything, going into the middle of the field, trying to keep make a tough throw for Leach to get to one of his wide receivers. As a result, he's leaving his backs open. I just wouldn't stop throwing it until they covered it. Gary Cobb, number 53, slid right along with him. Roosevelt Smith had four catches today. He had only five in the regular season. Second down, four. The option. Leach on the pitch out to Smith. Smith tumbled down in USC territory at the USC 47. But that's enough for a first down. And the safety man, Dennis Smith, made the hit on him. And when the safety men have to come up on an option play and get into the act, you know it's a successful play. That's the first time I've seen Leach run the option to the wide side where he had some room to use his head. When he pitched the ball out, he'd already picked up six, seven yards, and uh, they have moved it very convincingly so far in the third quarter. Yes, he was into a blitz. They had Ron Lott, the rover, coming in, but he was picked up quite quite effectively by Russell Davis. Sort of stuck it to him pretty good there. First down, Michigan, USC 47. That's a good hit on Roosevelt Smith. You saw him line up in an eye with a with a wing back in the eye. That's Clayton coming out of motion. Jim Becker said he wants to do some of that stuff so that USC will be hesitant on defense. They don't want to just have him line up and expect the formation and just what to come out of it. Dennis Johnson didn't look too hesitant to me. Roosevelt Smith's been busy here in the third period. Second down, nine. Michigan on the USC 46. Alan Mitchell in motion. Leach will throw. Now he's going to fumble the ball loose. Scramble sports out of bounds. Everybody's there. It's smothered by those players, our viewpoint on the Michigan sideline. It looked to me like Leach made a pretty good last ditch effort to get his hand on the ball and get it out of bounds. He knew he was in trouble. Fumble it forward. He comes back. It looks like he's got a receiver, Clayton, open. However, the ball hits off his knees he's, as he's tucking it in, trying to run. When he did go down, he did put his hand out. Well, I think those left-handed quarterbacks, you know, Kenny Stabler, those left-handed quarterbacks got something about those <laughs> forward fumbles. And, of course, an unusual game today with two starting left-handers. 39-yard line of USC. Third down and two to go for Michigan. Seven minutes to play in the third period. Flies go down. Do they take too much time? 25 seconds to run a playoff in college football. They did. John, you think he was checking off? 
I don't really know. I, I think he had a play call. It was an option play, and I don't think you would check off in that circumstance. It didn't look to me as if he was going back to throw the balls. There wouldn't be any reason to have done so. I think they were just a little late getting out of the huddle. Yeah, they didn't spend much time on the line of scrimmage then. There's a man you just saw, John, it's a legal delay, John Robinson, who said he started the Rose Bowl game when he played up at Oregon. The last seven seconds of the game, he came in, and uh, the other club quarterback ran back and fell on the ball, according to Robinson, because he was scared of Robinson's entrance <laughs> into the game. <laughs> and the game was over. So he had a very short Rose Bowl history as a player. Back to the 44 of USC. Third down and seven. Leach fakes. Look at him pursuing. He better throw. He throws on the run. He's got it. He's got and it is a touchdown. Michigan. Roosevelt Smith got the ball. He beat Dennis Smith. He beat Dennis Smith. And Michigan's right back in. I don't know, Kurt, what it is that Bo Schembechler does at halftime. But they did the same thing last year in the Rose Bowl. Washington looked like they were running all over the top of them. This game is not going at all like that one did, but the score has. Now he puts it back in the ball game with a beautifully thrown ball across his body in the middle of the field. One of the toughest to throw, and he hits him right on the dead run. A 44-yard pass. Rick Leach, under extreme pressure, hit Roosevelt Smith down the middle, and Roosevelt Smith has been the busiest man on the field here in the third quarter. And I said that there's something about Michigan's third quarter. You know, I think they've outscored their opponent something like 90 to 10 in the third quarter, and it's sure showing sure true here today. There's the kick. It is up, and the kick is good by Greg Wilner. So I have a timeout. Seven minutes to go in the third period. And the score is USC 17, Michigan 10. There's Robinson and the great history of his Rose Bowl participation, seven seconds. Coached up there. He's a coach here under John McKay for three years, coach under the Oakland Raiders, and back again as head coach. There's a deep handoff to the tailback, Charles White. And he's again hit by Ron Sip. The touchdown again. As you can see, he was under a lot of pressure. He, he wanted you to just set up and throw. He started running. Strangely, the SC bench was arguing that he was over the line of scrimmage, but you'll see here that he definitely wasn't. That's the 46-yard line where he let it go. The line of scrimmage was the 44. Leach just threw his 17th touchdown pass of the year on that one. Second down, seven. 27-yard line of USC. Lynn Kane is piled up. That's the first time they stopped him up the middle. He's been getting some bursts of 5, 8, 10 yard. Curtis Greer was in his way. Number 95, the right tackle. On the 31, third and three. 17 to 10 now. USC leading. We've had a disputed touchdown in the first half. The Orange Bowl, Oklahoma, Nebraska, coming up right after this game in Miami. Charlie White. White runs for the first down. That little burst of speed took him outside. Yeah, well, it, it's good thing he has the speed because that play didn't look like it was going to work. He had a lot of penetration on it. It hadn't worked all day, but it was the speed of Charles White to get outside to get the first down. Placed the ball on the USC 36. Look at the USC tailbacks. They have become the royalty of football, and OJ's one of the kings. White, Davis, Ricky Bell, OJ, and Garrett. Two OJ years, and uh, Ricky He'd Bell were the, court. the two biggest ones. White's about 185. He's up at the 45, and he's to the 50 for another first down. Charlie White starting to move now. Mike Jolly stopped him. Well, Charlie could have been gone all the way that time, but little Kevin Williams, uh, a lot of times you want your wide receivers to just take a shot at the cornerback, make him move, and he didn't take a shot. He's kind of standing out there trying to see what the corner is going to do, and Charles just had to shoot up field. As you see, ran right by him and just went up field for the first down. He has 68 yards. He had only 35 in the first half. Strong formation right. White. White slithers for a couple of yards, and that's all. To the 48-yard line of Michigan. Tackled by Ron Simpkins. This Simpkins is some linebacker. 
Well, I say other than the second quarter when uh, Lynn Kane got some positive yards up the middle, this is about the most impressive drive that he has had. They haven't had any real impressive drive today. They've taken advantage of uh, some mistakes by Michigan, but this is the first time they really look like they're moving the football and the guys up front may be beginning to control Michigan somewhere. throws and is incomplete at the 21 mark brayman was there that's the bug williams and you you just have an innate sense as a quarterback where that line of scrimmage was that was about as close as he could possibly cut it however he's had a bad ankle as we watch sweeney go down the field he's trying to come all the way across now he sees that he sees mcdonald mcdonald has a problem he's trying to come over and help did the best thing he could under the circumstance. McDonald gave him the ball in the only place he could handle it, and he just dropped it as he hit the ground. All right, we discussed how a quarterback just has a sense of knowing where that line of scrimmage is. Now, he's just running. All of a sudden, he feels that the ball's about at the line of scrimmage and lets it go. They flood three receivers to the left on third and eight. McDonald looks him over right down the middle. Down with Sweeney, and it was nearly intercepted by Mark Brayman. Sweeney, Calvin Sweeney, fell down, and it was nearly intercepted by Brayman. And I think the impressive thing defensively to me about Michigan, they said they don't play against too many throwing teams. However, the Big Ten has changed. I think Daryl Rogers, Lee Corso, these guys have changed that thing. They've played excellent defensive back play. And I think it's kept McDonald from being as effective as he has been all year. Simpkins tries to get his hand in the act, too. There's the kick by Marty King. And it is into the end zone for a touchback. Michigan's ball first down on their own 20. We have four minutes, 21 seconds left in this third period. The score is Southern Cal 17, Michigan 10. 20-yard line of Michigan, first down. They have scored in the third period on a Leach to Smith 44-yard pass. Southern Cal has not scored. Davis and Smith are the running backs. Clayton in motion. Leach on the keeper. Out to Smith. And up in him at the 21-yard line. Ron, Ron Lott, the rover, from Rialto, California, sophomore. You may be wondering why Huckabee is not in the game. I think I think he's been having a lot of problems in practice. He hasn't been uh, he's been injured quite a bit, and I didn't think he was running with a lot of authority early in the game. Now now his uh, replacement is doing an excellent job. There he is on the sideline. Well, he was there. Roosevelt Smith's been doing the job, and I think that's why he's standing there right now. Yeah, Roosevelt had a couple of big games. He went for over 150 yards against Wisconsin this year. They flared out. Roosevelt Smith, 25. Down on the 26-yard line, Dennis Smith coming up to banging down. A gain of four, third and four for Michigan. They want this first down to keep it going. Three and a half minutes remain in the third period. They're trailing by seven. Having played with a lot of Michigan ball players, uh, I knew Michigan's uh, a philosophy in, in the past, as Bo's philosophy is that, hey, we're going to go out and out hit them, and the fourth quarter is ours. They try to wear their opponents down and win the game in the fourth quarter. They want to stay close until the fourth quarter, and this game is only a seven-point difference. I think they feel pretty good right now. Third down four. Good rush. He just threw that one out of desperation. He had to get rid of it. They were trying to get a screen pass. They were trying to get a screen off, Kurt. The screen was handled by the linebackers. It was very well played defensively. He had nowhere to go. He did the only thing he could. Rick Leach will come over and talk to his coach. Punt formation, Greg Wilner will boot it and set to handle the return is Raymond Butler. Remember, Alabama beat Penn State today. In the minds of many, the winner of this game could be right in there up high in the votes for the mythical national champion. USC defeated Alabama earlier in the year. USC's played five bowl teams. Butler, the 36. Butler escaping and then back to the 37 and that's all. First down. 
2.20 to play in the third period. Trojans on the Michigan 47. Kane stopped at the 50 at 45 yard line. Lynn Kane. Mike Turgovac, the middle guard, and Jerry Meter, one of the co-captains. Well, SC's got to take advantage of this quarter. They've been getting some pretty good field position, and that just doesn't happen the whole games, and, and they got to take some uh, advantage of that. they got to get a score in this quarter, hopefully on this drive, or it's going to give the momentum to Michigan, I think, going into the fourth quarter. Second down, eight. Rockishan in motion. Charlie White, he goes down. He may have lost a yard. Mark Raymond really played that well, number 28. They bring him to the turf. Third coming for USC. They have a third and eight. Let's check the passing figures. For McDonald, he's, he's only attempted uh, seven and completed four for 23 yards. That's not what you call a blockbuster. Well, Way below his seasonal output. Bug Williams going out to the right. Third and eight. Going to the bug and he fell down. Williams fell down. They're slipping a lot here. Kevin Williams, 155 pounder, but he's an all Pac-10 receiver. Gets a one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's got him in a good position, but he can't keep his feet. Ball's thrown just a little behind him. Had he kept his feet, he could have been, he could have moved inside and grabbed it. Marty King punting. Mike Jolly again, the safety. A high kick. Fair catch call. Jolly fields it on his 10-yard line. Michigan will put the ball in play with 43 seconds to go in the third quarter. First down, Michigan on their 11. Leach. Out it goes to Roosevelt Smith. I haven't seen Michigan do this in previous Rose Bowls, throw deep in their own territory. Well, they wanted to throw the ball deep also, but it was very well played by Lavender. Gave the wide receiver no room at all. Leach had to come up, and that's the first time the linebackers have pursued well on the halfback. Well, I said that's the same play they've been running a lot. They try to run the receiver into the flat. They run the linebacker, I mean, the, uh, the halfback. They duke him out of the backfield. Hopefully, he'll cover, he'll bring the cornerback up, and they try to hit the receiver going down the sideline. Second down, 10. Roosevelt Smith stopped at the 12-yard line. He's hit there by Dennis Edwards, the freshman, a phenom at right tackle, and another freshman, Ricky Gray, the weak side linebacker. Third down, nine to go for Michigan. We may not get the playoff before the gun of the third quarter sound. The wind is no factor, so it doesn't matter. There's the gun. And the end of the third quarter of the 65th Rose Bowl game with the score of the University of Southern California, 17, and the University of Michigan, 10. Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, O.J. Simpson take you into the fourth period. Michigan has outgained USC total offense. Michigan 172 yards, USC 131. And Michigan's had the ball 23 minutes and seven seconds. USC 21 minutes and 53 seconds. About even on possession. This is third down. The 12 yard line of Michigan, third and eight. Play action pass. Leach runs it out. He stopped at the 17. He's short of a first down. Dennis Johnson, the linebacker, holding down. So they'll have to punt. Greg Wilner again. This has turned into a punting duel the second half. Trident keeps giving SC good field position. The Ju Juice mentioned it earlier. You can't contain a good offensive football team if you give it to them five or six times in one half that way. 
Well, SC has not been taking advantage of it. They've had a good field position throughout the second half now, and they haven't gotten any points from it, and they're going to have to score here if they want to preserve this uh, lead. Get this to uh, Butler in the 42. Butler trying to get outside. 45, 50. His speed got him out there. Well, his outside speed enabled him to pick up seven or eight extra yards, and the Trojans had the ball on the 46-yard line of Michigan with a score 17-10 USC, 14 minutes to go. McDonald, White is buried. He ran under Tom Sebron, number 91, and Curtis Greer, number 95. And that's a loss for the Michigan 48 is second and 12. Well, as I said before, I think Michigan's defensive line has controlled fairly much this game. Uh, SC and Spurts have had some effect, uh, been effective running the ball, but they certainly haven't done running the ball what they wanted to do and what they usually do. McDonald is going to throw. Come on. Curtis Greer, he's been a terror here in the second half. Greer right in there on him, 95 for a big loss. Curtis again, he had nobody open downfield. I'll tell you, the defensive backs for Michigan are covering those receivers like blankets. They're covering awfully good people, too. Can't throw it if you can't get any time. Third down and 17. Right now, the margin of this game is on a controversial touchdown scored by Charles White. A goal line plunge with the ball popping loose. Looked like it popped loose before he got to the goal line. And the bomb to the bug. The bug's there, but it's way over his head. Bug Williams had steps on Michael Harden, but the ball was beyond his reach. The ball threw it just a little too soon. He had a little more time. If he had waited a fraction of a, of a second, I think SC could have been put six points on the board. And again, John, SC failed to take advantage of their field position. They have, but they've been able to keep Michigan in a hole, and something's going to bust. There's a the kick by Marty King. Jolly takes it immediately. He is knocked down. That was a great charge. Dennis Smith went down to hit him. Now Michigan again, deep in their own territory with the ball in the fourth period. And again, the score, 17-10 Trojans. There are 12 minutes, 35 seconds remaining in this Rose Bowl game. Here's the punt. Okay, it really helps when you don't have to let your lineman delay until the ball is kicked before you can go downfield. You get good pursuit. Dennis Smith's been playing that ball all day long. We almost had a rough in the, uh, the receiver penalty there. So anyway, Michigan has been in the hole the whole second half. John Brody seemed to think that they're going to come out with a play action pass on this play. They want to get out of the hole. But they give the ball up the middle to Russell Davis. Russell Davis runs into Ricky Gray. The two freshmen again combining for USC in the tackle. Edwards the right tackle, Gray the inside linebacker. Gray has had, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Gray has had five solo tackles this game, and it's been in on three uh, uh, assists. He's an excellent freshman, excellent prospect. It's amazing to me how freshmen can walk in now, John, and, and, and start in their first year. I thought they could have when I was playing ball, but it was a rule against it at that time, and it was a good rule. Second down, eight. Sleep spinning around. Look, Look at that. Out. There's a great throw. That's the tight end, Doug Marsh with the ball. He's that hurt. shows you what an athlete Leach is. He's down Rick as Leach he was hit. How he got rid of that ball, I'll never know. That's the sort of thing you can't you can't coach. He knows he, he knows his team depends on him to get out of the hole. As he goes back to throw, he's barely the first man back there. Lapka's in good shape. Dennis Johnson almost brings him down. He gets away, and just as he gets hit, he throws the ball, and I think his knee just buckled under him a bit. But they did get a big play, and they're out of a hole. Well, some of the SC players were arguing that his knee touched the ground, and he was down, and it was pretty close. But I think he got it off. He's an excellent football player. He's making it all happen for Michigan. Okay. 
They have a first down. Leach keeps it on the keeper and goes to the 31-yard line. Ricky Gray again. Now we have the freshman in there, Butch Wolfolk. Big, strong tailback from Westfield, New Jersey, who is the fastest player ever recruited at Michigan for either track or football. He has run the 100 meters in 10-1. He weighs 198. You'll be hearing a lot of him. Second down, seven. Wolverines on their 31. There he is. Butch Wolfolk. And <laughs> Myron Lapka wrapped him up. Welcome to the Rose Bowl, son. Thirty-yard line. They have a big third down play now. They're trailing Michigan. 17-10. Ten. ten and a half minutes to go in this game. The defensive struggle here in the second half. Only one touchdown. That's scored by Michigan. 44-yard pass. Leach to Roosevelt Smith. Smith back in at tailback. Leach is going to throw. The protection. He runs out of the pocket. Gets to the 30. Dives down. He's short of the first down in the 34. Fell in front of Gary Cobb. They were all covered. I tell you, the man is so agile. He's such a fine athlete. It's virtually impossible to sack him unless you bring one or two linebackers. They're rushing three men. He's just picking his way through there, and I think he can run for five yards all day long just by setting up the pass and taking off. And five was just about four short that time, yep. so they've got the punt. And again, they got out of the hole, but they have to get a sustained drive. If I was them, I swear, I dropped back the throw on first down. If you find the receiver open, throw. If not, run. And I think he'd get five, six yards every first down. Greg Wilner boots it to Butler, calls for a fair catch at the 34. Both teams are jockeying now, waiting for something to happen. Coming up now is a third down and two play. For USC on the Michigan 46. Trojan Bath. You know, I don't think SC really wanted to call a timeout. I think Charles White was a little shook up. He went to the sidelines, and I think they called a timeout just to keep him into the game. Michigan digging in. There's White. They got him. They nail him for a loss of the 49. Andy Canavito, who has been. Brilliant today as an inside linebacker. His father, Joe, played for Ohio State here in the 1958 Rose Bowl game. And that's where it's tough. Third down and two, third down and three. Watch Andy Canavino shoot right through the hole. He does in perfect position to bring down Charles White, and they're forcing another turnover. Again, a punt. The deepest penetration for Michigan in this third and fourth period has been to their own 34-yard line. They have not had field position. They've got to hit a long pass, break the run, or start a drive, and they're now down to 5.58 remaining. Just checking my uh, running play-by-play -play. after that pass to Smith. They have been pinned back deep in their own territory since midway in the third period. No field position whatsoever. The kick by Marty King. Jolly. On the 10, Dolly belted down. They put him along the 11-yard line. Leach to Jackson. Jackson looked like he wanted to pass. He does pass. Throws it up in the stands. He was hit as he let it go. That was a flanker reverse with a pass coming off the reverse. Well, you know you've got to do something if you're Michigan. SC's kicking game has kept Michigan in the hole since midway through the third quarter. Since they scored their first, their only touchdown, they have not had good field position. That play, a little fooler play, looked as if had the man not been try trying to go with the throw all the way, he might have turned the corner. Well, I think so. I think what Michigan is thinking also is the time now. They have to put the ball up in the air. They've got to preserve uh, some time on the clock that if they're not successful throwing the ball at least they won't waste much time and they'll be able to get the ball again Tony Jackson, in a better position. Tony Jackson went out Ralph Clayton replaced him it was Charlie Moses that hurried Tony Jackson on that throw now Leach is back to pass he shoots it out there he is he's got a receiver for a first down that's Ralph Clayton 
Clayton caught the ball up around his 30-yard line, tackled immediately by Larry Brazil, the quarterback. All right, Rick Leach does it in the toughest of circumstances. It's a one-man pattern. He's got Clayton going down deep into the zone area, behind the linebackers. Leach puts the ball over the top of Dennis Johnson, right where it has to be thrown. They get out of a hole, and they've got about five minutes and 27 seconds to do something. And Clayton is down. Let's watch him again. All right, perfect turn. Just the way you draw it up. Gives himself a lot of leeway to go for the ball wherever it's thrown. When you take a look, when a man is running against his own defense, just to come flying across there doesn't do you much good. He gives himself an opportunity to move wherever the ball is thrown. Leach is under a lot of pressure, puts it in the hole that, that exposes itself, and Clayton brings it down. And we're waiting to see what's with uh, Clayton. He's flipping off, as you see. I don't believe it's serious. Back every step, he's getting a little more confidence. But he's going to be replaced as he comes off. Well, it looks to me like Leach's adrenaline is flowing. You know, the stage is set. He's a senior. He started four years. He's never won out here. I think the stage is set for Rick Leach to go out in a flurry here. He certainly put that last pass on the money. He hands off to Roosevelt Smith. And you have some great pursuit there by Myron Lapka, the left tackle, and Dimmler, the nose guard. They're a tough couple of fellas to run against, along with that the right tackle, that freshman, Dennis Edwards, who has been such an excellent pass rusher today. 32-yard line of Michigan, second and eight. I'll tell you, there's a beautiful scene right now here, Pasadena. The sun, the setting sun is hitting the San Gabriel Mountain. And there's a sort of a pinkish color in those mountains. It's just beautiful. Second down, eight. Play action pass. The throw. Hot. Out of bounds. Gene Johnson, the tight end. You find me, Kurt, a better thrown ball than that one, and I will put in with it. He had the toughest possible throw to make he could. He had to get it over the top of Ron Lott, who was covering Johnson all the way. Johnson had only a step. He's throwing it running as fast as he can to get away from pressure. They're putting a lot of people in on Leach. They know they've got to do something. They can't let him stand back there. Throws it on the run, hits it right over the shoulder. Johnson gets one foot in. And that's all you need in college football. That's the first time they've hit him. First down, Michigan on their 49. They've come up from their 11-yard line. 4.27 to play. The option, Leach is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And surging in there again is Myron Lapka, number 96. Most of the notoriety has gone to Rich Dimmler all year, but I think Myron Lapp has played about as good a football game as any down lineman out there today. Second down, 14. Michigan fans trying to get their club moving. Mitchell comes out. Rod Feaster goes in a wide receiver, number 18. He's flanking with the near side. Maybe they'll go to him. Second and 14. USC ahead, 17-10. He has the time, and he throws, and he's got his tight end again. Crossing the middle, Ricky Gray making the hit, helped by Gary Cobb. Gene Johnson, his second second reception. Heard we're looking at a situation now with just a little, little over three minutes to play. He's got third and eight. I very much look for him to try and pick it up on fourth down if they're not successful this time. If they don't, they've really got to stuff SC on a turnover. Well, I tell you, Rick, Rick certainly has the hot hand. Everything he's been throwing is right on the money now. Crowd roaring. Third down eight. Michigan trying to put on a furious rally. Play action pass. He's going deep, deep, deep to Feaster. It is incomplete in the five. Rodney Feaster was there, number 18, but he was double teamed. Fourth and eight for Michigan. Dennis Smith had an excellent opportunity to get his third interception today. He was well covered. He pumps, he throws. It's a pretty good throw. The guy never was really open. Dennis Smith played the ball all the way. 
There's Feaster. He's trying to just dissect the zone, trying to outrun it, got fine speed. Nothing fancy about that one. He know Rick Leach just wound up, let that Hummer go. They are in a punt formation. Greg Wilner. Look for anything here. USC will. But it's going to be a punt. Fair catch call on the USC 15-yard line by Butler. Trojan's ball. Now Michigan's hope is to hold him. Hold him deep. Get the ball back again. Better field position. Hope for anything. Well, I tell you, Bo obviously played for field position. He knows SC is not going to throw the ball in this series. He's going to have everybody on the line of scrimmage. Those linebackers are going to be on their toes, leaning forward. SC, if they can get a first down here, could really put him in the hole. It's two minutes and 44 seconds left to go in the game, and Bo Schimbrecker has just put the game on his defensive player's shoulders. You said that he knows SC is not going to put the ball up in the air. I think if they don't, they won't get out of that hole. I'd kind of look for him to do it. Three timeouts left for Michigan, two for USC. Charlie White straight ahead. And Charlie White is approaching 100 yards. John Robinson. With him there was Paul Hackett, who I think is responsible for a lot of the development of the quarterbacks at SC. Watch Kobe. The job he did on Vince Evans, and of course, with Barkowski and Roth up at Cal. Excellent coach. Valley White again. And break loose. Down he goes on the 18 yard line. Look at Bo. Boy, Bo, Bo's in 10. Simpkins again, Dale Kites, watch Simpkins. This man has been in the action all day long. I don't know how many solo tackles he's made, but he's had a piece of that ball carrier from down one today. They have a third down and seven. Ron Simpkins, who set the all-time record for most tackles this year. He's had six solos in this game. Canavino's had three, Simpkins has had five assists. Third down. Seven. McDonald off the cane, first down, and a big first down for USC. A delay play, Lynn Kane broken, and USC keeps the ball. All right, you're, you're correct. They did not put the ball up in the air. They did get out of the hole on a draw play. That's good play up front. They only made one mistake. He ran out of bounds. He should have stayed on the field of play, forced Michigan to use a timeout. He ran out of bounds, but at this point, with a minute and 24 seconds left, they're not playing defensive offense. They're going to play offense. They're going to try to get a first down. I think that's what they needed. Even if they don't get the first down, they'll punt, keep Michigan in the hole with very little time left. A minute 24 remaining. USC ahead, 17 to 10. Lynn Kane again. Kane finding the hole. Quick start at Canavino and Harden teamed up to take him. Now the ball is placed with a timeout called by Michigan to stop the clock with a minute 12 to go. Ball just over the 50 yard line. All right, Michigan has two timeouts left. However, if they get another first down, there is not enough time to keep things going. Let me check it, it's on the 46 yard line. All right, we're going to take a timeout here along NBC Way. 17 to 10 is a score, USC in the lead. Right now, the view for USC is a second and two on their 46 yard line. They're trying to keep the ball. Charlie White has a first down. They stopped the clock at the first down of the 49 of USC. Charlie White's gone over 100 yards. Lynn Kane has rushed for 90 yards. 17 to 10 USC, a minute eight to go. Oh, they can sit on it right now. And down goes McDonald. 42 seconds to go. We want to thank Joe Costanza, Dr. Robert Woods, Dennis Pedician, Chuck Panama, and Arthur Hoffman for all their assistance up here in the booth. And we have a timeout. Controversial touchdown we showed you. A plunge by Charlie White. In which the touchdown counted. And we had one particular replay that they happened to find among all the replays with our multi cameras that showed the ball popping out of White's hand and landing on the grass short of the goal line before he was there. 
But we had the hindsight and all the reruns to judge it by. Yeah, that hindsight is always 20-20. Right now, the foresight is very simple. Sit on the ball. There is no way they have enough timeouts to get the ball back if you don't make a critical error. John Robinson, Paul McDonald, they know they've had all they can handle this afternoon. This ball game has not been one that either team really dominated. I believe that's Michigan's last time out. Co-players of the game have been selected, Rick Leach and Charlie White. And they're on the cover of the Rose Bowl program. Down goes Paul McDonald. And the clock stops. This must be their last time out. There's the time remaining, 38 seconds. Clock has stopped, 38 seconds. Incidentally, O.J. Simpson, you are hosting a big show before the Super Bowl game, uh, January 20th. Yeah, I'm going to be down there, down in Miami, with my co-host, Ted Knight. We're going to have a lot of friends down there. Bob Hope, Gary Coleman, Artie Johnson, Melba Moore, the Rams cheerleaders. We're going to have celebrities trying to pick not only the winner of the Super Bowl, but try to name the score. People like Johnny Carson and Dean Martin and Joe Namath. We're going to be down there with, as, as my buddy Howard Cosell would say, a plethora <laughs> of football players and entertainment celebrities. You know what? I always heard you were a name dropper. <laughs> I want to thank O.J. Simpson today for being with us. John Brody, another excellent job. And John will be the host of the Bob Hope Open along with Arnold Palmer coming up on NBC. And don't forget the Houston-Pittsburgh game in Pittsburgh next Sunday, January 7th, for the American Football Conference Championship. The winner goes to the Super Bowl in Miami. will play the National Football Conference champ, either Los Angeles or Dallas, and it'll be on NBC. This 105,629. I know the crowd's more than that jammed in here. This is a happening in America, this Rose Bowl game. Well, let me tell you, that crowd is like a hometown crowd for the University of Michigan. They averaged at home about 104,000 people a game. That's amazing. This is their sixth game, OJ, that the Michigan team has played before over 100,000 people. And it looks like it's going to end up with another frustration for Bo Schembechler. He has played five bowl games, four in the Rose, one in the Orange, and has not won that last game. And yet he's had the greatest coaching record in America the last 10 years. He had his team prepared in here. They came in and played a superlative game. The USC just edged him out and edged him out on a controversial touchdown call. And there's John Robinson coming across now. 17 to 10, the final score, USC won it. A defensive battle in the second half, only one touchdown score. And I think, too, right now, USC and Coach John Robinson know there's a chance that they may be voted number one. It looks to be between Alabama and USC. We'll just have to wait. There's Bo, great sport, Bo. You bet. He's a, they they really man. are fond of each other. Uh, Robinson went to Schembechler's spring camp and to his coaching clinic and helped him. They have become very close friends since they played here in the 77 Rose Bowl. Yeah, game. Robinson also says that if his son said he wanted was recruited by Michigan, he'd tell him to go. That's about as much as you can say about another man. Schembechler going off, losing a hard fought 17 10 game. There's McDonald, the quarterback, his coach Robinson, Paul McDonald has a chance to be a Rhodes Scholar here at USC in the footsteps of Pat Hayden. He went to the same high school as Pat Hayden, Bishop of Mont. And that's a real scholar athlete. Well, Robinson has won his second Rose Bowl. And the crowd filing out. Nearly dark here now in Pasadena. And this was really a tough football game down here. Two offenses that averaged over 400 yards a game and today neither could near that total. They were checked by each other's defense.